Hi, and welcome again to another Three Heroes, One Shaft Presents Basic Blasters. We're going to be blasting knowledge all over your face, and today we're here to J.O., and I, by J.O., I mean Jade Obelisk, baby. We're here joined with another guest of ours and another teammate member. Uh, Pete, you want to introduce yourself there? I'm Peter Mersencavage, the Saint 16 on Discord. Right. Who else we got up there? a few words there, Uh, uh, Kyle. (laughs) Uh, great way to know uh, here again. So awesome. Uh, once again, uh, I'm going to kind of just be guiding us through this, but I'm going to take a back seat, right? Uh, once again, I play death like crazy. So this chaos stuff, uh, that's that's love Peter's alley. What way, way more than me. So, uh, but the one thing I do know, because I am a book nerd, is the legends of the lore behind this. A little new segment I wanted to add, because to me, part of the vibes is knowing the background, right? When I get these guys on the table, why do I like them? Painting is just as important as playing, right? So why do I want to paint these guys? Uh, essentially, in the old times, Sigmar uh, kind of forgot about them in the Age of Chaos. So they're like, hey, I'm going insane and these stones are speaking to me. Listen to the stones. A big bird came out of the stones. He's like, hey, let's make a deal. And they said, you know, giant bird stone monster. What could possibly go wrong? Except the deal. And now uh, they're super strong. Unfortunately, that did help them defeat the other chaos guys, but hurt them because now they're slowly turning to stone. Unless, you know, they sacrifice one or two people to their crazy, crazy bird gods. So uh, really cool lore. Highly recommend reading more into them if you're into seeing uh, what an entire civilization can do when they uh, make a bad deal in a desperate time. But uh, really that vibe of turning to stone and being super strong and slow, like we're going to see that throughout this entire segment. But talking about the vibes, Pete, take it away. Yeah, so uh, we got the pros and cons and the vibes, right? So looking at the pros, right? These guys uh, got some crazy damage output. Uh, you get them positioned right, they they can really pull up and even trade up for their points. Uh, the other thing is they got a decent amount of wounds, and at that T4 there, they're a little more tanky than you'll get with a lot of warbands. Uh, so a little bit tanky, good damage output. What, what about the cons, right? They're, they're slow. That's that's probably the biggest thing that affects these guys is getting them to where they need to be. So positioning, they're very model dependent. And then you have a little bit of a leader tax with the priestess that she's she's kind of a funky choice when it comes to bespoke warband leader. She's not your typical what you expect to see when you get a bespoke leader. Um, now, vibe wise, you you. They're, they're very straightforward. You're, once we get to the abilities, you're going to see that more. But you got to play them aggressive. These are not guys you want to hold back on because then all of a sudden you're going to get halfway through the game being like, I do not have my pieces where I need them to be. Um, but they they feel like they can really take a hit. Uh, and even with some of those other abilities, the healing comes into play as well, which typically in Warcry, healing you kind of stay away from. Uh, but every once in a while, a model gets it right. And these are one of these guys that you can kind of pull that off with. Uh, but it's just, it's very positioning. You got to constantly think, how do I get these guys where I need them to be to get the most out of them? Uh, so again, we talked about toughness. Their average toughness, it's right around four. Uh, strength, you're bouncing around in the four or five range, depending on the model. Um, average wounds most that's, of these guys. Uh, that's definitely a mistake i'm not sure how that got slowed over to 20 plus because <laughs> they are not that tanky they're yeah, on the high end of 12 i'm sorry that must I mean, have, that must have been me obelisk bears, <laughs> yeah, average, yeah, it's 20 obelisk bears then yeah it would be yeah, a 20 right, plus right, my right. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> now that being said yeah obelisk bear and priestess you're you're sitting at that 20 but the rest of the guys i think all right around the 12 mark yeah, around the 12 um, mark, yeah. yeah unless you're looking at the idol arc but um Average move is more right around three, but we'll, we'll get the idle arc and stuff in there that's going to come into play. Um, an average warband size, I think, is sitting more right around the what, eight, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, uh, I'm yeah. not sure what happened here in what the here, stats Kyle? on the what side, happened but here? We're just I'm 99% sure I fixed these, so I'm, I'm going to blame Rob when he does some updates it, in Kyle's here. Kyle's just oh, making sure. sure that, you know, I, I remember <laughs> what warband we're, we're talking about here. Make sure I, I understand. Uh, yeah, about. like just to go through it more time, they're a little bit tougher than average, definitely stronger than average, mm-hmm. just slightly above average in terms of wounds, actually slightly slower than average in terms of move, actually more around three than four. Uh, their warband side is actually 
actually on the higher end from nine to 10. So you got a slow warband, kind of tanky, can move around the map very, very slowly, but uh, we put in there like very tanky. And we did that because the healing, right? They actually utilize that healing to stay alive way better than most other warbands. But once again, this comes down to, uh, they're not like the other girls, the other war bands. They got that leader tax, right? That priestess that uh, creates that healing bubble, and uh, it, which makes it position dependent. So you summarized it. I mean, I apologize about the, uh, the mistake there. But I did not make a mistake on this slide here, which is the stats and the strats. And we're seeing a lot of hearts here. We don't see that a lot when it comes down to war bands. I mean, almost everything they have is good, right? Yeah, that's the big thing here, right? Like, uh, I kind of also want to just br briefly chime in from before at the vibes, because there's one thing I really like in a lot of games. It's like defensive healing tech. Um, and there's it's kind of hard in Warcry just with the flow of the game state. But like, and we're going to go, now we just swap back over, right? We're just going to swap back over. Nice. We're going to go with the reaction, the Curse of Jade. This one's sick because the typical unfeeling flesh reaction is just minusing one off your damage. This one subtracts one off damage from hit and crit. That's really significant when someone's 2-4, they're becoming 1-3. When they're 2-5, they're 1-4. Your survivability with the wounds of like 10, 12 wounds really gets uh, elevated there. And then being able to use Stone Warp, which is what we talked about uh, for the healing. So you can tank and then you can heal it off, stay alive, and then set yourself up for a turn to swing back and do some really big damage. So right off the bat, we, we reduce with Cursed Jade. We, we can use a double stone warp, which all fighter can use this ability. If they're within nine inches of a visible friendly fighter with the uh, icon bearer rune mark, which is what's going to be your obelisk bearer, remove a number of damage points allocated to that half the value. If the fighter is also within six of the priest, which is the leader, you just remove a flat value of the dice. So boom, double six, just and you're within two of them clean off six damage like that like it's nothing i mean like rob to put in perspective for like most folks like most teams don't get healing at all right except the generic ability which is the value of a triple and you have to right. be not engaged to anybody at all or you have to be an injury right. from people if i got triple twos i can heal for two that, that's kind of nuts these guys if you're right. near the icon bear and a priest and i got double sixes yeah i heal for six like healing for six on a double that, that's huge Absolutely huge. And uh, Curse of Jade, I want to point out, because you brought it up with reducing the damage. Uh, it's actually better. Uh, I'm going to say this, and I'm sure you're all going to laugh at me right now. It's better than Soul Blight. Soul Blight it only reduces the flush. damage. And this one reduces damage from hits and crits, meaning that it's useful across the board, no matter what's hitting you in melee. 1-4 profile, 1-3 profile, uh, which a lot of teams don't get. But uh, they do get some really good damage doubles. This is the reason to bring the team, right, Pete? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you're going to come, we're going to come back to this too, I think, talking about this, because you're going to find the Stone Warp and the Cursed Jade play off better with certain models in this war band, depending on the situation. But we'll, we'll talk more about that. But yeah, uh, the two big uh, damage dealing ones you're going to be looking at is first is the double hammering strikes, uh, which you're going to get on the uh, defacers, right? And basically what you're looking at there is a fighter can only use this ability if an enemy fighter has been allocated damage points by an attack action made by them this activation. All right, then you're going to add half the value of the ability, rounding up, to the damage points allocated by each hit and critical hit for the next melee attack action made against that enemy fighter, right? So the idea is you've got to get both attack actions in to pull this off right so again positioning right you want the enemy either coming to you or you're positioning yourself to entering the next round you're going to go ahead and pop that double because chances are you're going to have a double and really mess with them with this ability uh the other one is the uh rock shattering blow which again is a double and that's what you're going to use with your desecrators that's your sledgehammer and your war pick right so you're going to add one to the strength characteristic of the next melee attack action uh, made by this fighter and again you're going to add one to the damage of the hits and critical hits for that attack action nice one with this is you don't have to have that initial attack activation to get that in you can move in and then strike or uh like we just talked about the whole uh do the reaction curse of jade you hold off one action left there and then turn it around and pop that ability and swing above your weight class 
I mean, this is what we're talking about, like swinging up, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll show you what models have these, but for taking your person to give them plus one strength and plus one damage, like, no, just put in perspective, right? The blessings for plus one strength on a, a smaller model, 15 points, for plus one damage is 25 points, right? You're essentially getting 40 points for a double on a turn. That's that's crazy in terms of what this ability could actually do. Right. Especially when you start looking at these guys' actual attack stats. Oh yeah, we're gonna this, get to that. this is very reminiscent for people who are tuning in that um, that do play uh, Warcry and have some sort of broader acumen of other warbands, not just coming in for uh, a basics of a one box. Uh, it's 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 very reminiscent of Seraphon, right? Where you're going to use a defensive reaction and then you're going to clap back by staying alive with above average. Uh, above average things like they get tearing bite on a triple but we're getting rock shattering blow to both attacks right we're getting um and then we're getting hammering strike if we've like already attacked once dealt some damage and then all of a sudden we're tearing bite back right onto that uh, but not all their abilities are great like and we see bloody tribute here to the triple like you wonder like why there's an x and once again for those watching like the hearts the x's the checks they don't really mean anything right I, we put it there because this is how we feel about these F abilities. fake news it's fake news uh, but <laughs> every one of these abilities can have its moment can have its per uh, time right yeah. so like the bloody tribute here right if uh essentially your leader kills somebody uh you can give someone a free move you're like free move that's great right until you see how bad the leader's attack profile is, and you're wondering why this triple ever exists on this team. But right, it's a tragedy because she's like <laughs> one of the sweetest looking models yeah. too. Very Kali Ma vibes. Oh you my know? god, Indiana Jones just holding the heart in her hand. Like, right, oh dude, my god, sure. it's awesome. Uh, but Gaze the Adlark Pete is uh, is pretty good for this team. Like it's not usable every turn, but the most turns, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, and now. It, it, there's a lot of different opinions on the idol arc, right? But in the in this warband, especially when we're talking about how do I play one box, right? Uh, Gaze of the Idol arc is really nice because you have the speed piece that has can get across the board and basically pick his target with this, right? So it's a triple, uh, and you're going to pick a visible enemy fighter within nine inches of the fighter, right? Subtract half the value of this ability, rounding up from either the move characteristic or the toughness characteristic of that enemy fighter. Uh, down to a minimum of one, right? Until the end of the battle round. So it gives you this ability of being like, hey, I have this target that I'm setting up, you know, maybe rock shattering blow, right? Or maybe those hammering strikes. But being able to go like, hey, let's lower that toughness, make him much more likely to get snagged or the way i like using it which is a lot of fun is just going like hey you're not really going to move this round and being able to take a high priority target like uh, say a myrmidon or something like that and be like yeah you're not really going to do anything this round i mean it, i just think totally about worth cast a t6 you got triple sixes you're like yeah t3 stormcast have fun staying alive or the fact they only really move yeah. three so just like oh cool i got triple fours you could enjoy moving one inch at a time which it's it's not quite in that but it sure sure as heck feels like one um yeah it, yeah a lot of and it's nice there. too because sometimes it's nice not ha having something that's different than a net right it, it like right. It, it plays a little bit different than it but that that doesn't make it bad by any means and it, it kind of creates a situation where you have multiple options and you can pick the best place to put that ability it's one reason and i it's like, like it because it's toughness or speed like you don't see that in any other warband it's usually just like just a net or just toughness this is like yeah i can pick what i want at the time i want it so sorry Rob, right saying. it's no no it's all good it's it's really cool to see when it, it it almost Warcry feels very offensive focused. Like we're using onslaught, or and we also have the doubles here for two insane power amps, right? But like having something to be like, hey, like in a pinch that people forget about or not playing around because they're worried about getting cleaned off the board by a double. All of a sudden, it's a it's gaze of the idol arc, and then it's just, oh man, that thing I was gonna move in to really clap you is now like you said, like a lower movement, a lower toughness. And it changes the, it could change like a triple and a double could change the value instead of just putting it into a quad, right? Like there's a lot of play around that. And I think that like when you start learning basics of war brands and you start experimenting and using their abilities, even if it's unoptimal, like you use it and you start getting a better recollection of how to play it, 
you see these niches these niche niche situations will uh pop up more uh sorry about this appearing for everybody watching uh it wouldn't be a 3h1c event well, if something weird didn't happen to me well, and the uh, best we had a part hostage was situation we're, uh, outside right like we're we're talking about the gaze of the idol arc and then you got dragged away it kind of felt thematic a little bit in terms it of was like, it? there it is there it is look what it does <laughs> i'm just having an issue with uh rabbits attacking my uh plants we just planted back there so that's, that happens. That's uh, yeah, but no, just dude, to close this out, um, like the last quad here, uh, yeah. it's essentially a rampage, uh, old school rampage, but better. Uh, basically, uh, anyone your obelisk bearer could use this. Uh, if you have your priest alive on the battlefield, you could add three to the number of inches. Otherwise, if you have trip six, divide in half, three inches plus three if you got the priest on the battlefield. And whatever fighter you target gets either two bonus move, two bonus attack two disengages or any combination of the three so double attack go for it move and attack go for it attack and move go for it so um essentially it's kind of like a, a little bit more specific type of rampage that could be used in a really strong situation if you need double attacks or double move um just once again showing an increase in flexibility that this team has but honestly let's look at the stats here right because we've got the besties right off the bat right the priestess and the bear but what do you want to go through the stats here pete <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah so nephrite priestess again this is the kind of funky leader choice where you for movement so she's other than the idol arc she's the, the fastest guy, guy in the war band right but <laughs> t3 she's soft uh now you still got those 20 wounds which for 105 points is not bad at all uh, but again, at that T3, it's gonna it, it's gonna disappear quickly. So you kind of kind of watch her there. Now that being said, uh, she she is going to get knocked off the board if you're going up against stuff that hasn't moved yet, and they're you know going to react to you and counter. Right? She she doesn't handle counter well because she's only got strength three, but she's got four attacks. Right? So she's going to be crit fishing at a one four uh, profile there. But if you get her in on stuff that has already activated, uh, you're, she, she can pull some weight. Uh, like I said, when in doubt, roll sixes, right? But with four <laughs> dice, uh, you're you're more likely to get those sixes. So uh, it, it's going to be one of those things where sometimes she's not doing a whole lot. And then other times you're like, oh, okay. All right. Well, that chaff just got removed. I'm okay with that. Yeah, Actually, it's... real quick, chime in. I lost a game uh, in TTS to Caesar. Really good player on that. Shout out to him. He needed uh, two two sixes, and the last person he had left was the priestess to move in and hit for hit for eight and cleaned off my ripper and took the point and won the game. And I was like, "Well, mm -hmm. everybody calls it tax right. until it's not." So <laughs> there we go. Now we know Jade Opalisk broken. Just roll sixes. Broken, yeah. broken. You roll sixes. The broken, right? But something to keep in mind, right? Because a lot of those higher abilities, right, especially like the quad and the heel and stuff, you need her to be kind of in the middle of things to get the full benefit of that, right? So she's right. got to be amongst the boys, right? And she's a soft target, and your opponent's going to feel the need to remove her because she exemplifies the abilities, right? And that can kind of play to your benefit because suddenly it becomes she's got like a. Uh, the distraction card effects, so to speak, right. that everyone's like, we're going to go yeah. after this person, right? Yeah. It's the one that's creating all the heals and things. And like, she still stays yeah. alive, right? They got the reaction to reduce damage by one across the board. Um, but once again, kind of highlights like the S3 on your attack. I'm not sure how she's ripping someone's heart out without low strength, but she's doing it, I guess. <laughs> like, <Finesse. she's... laughs> well, about the finesse. Now, this going on to the other bestie of the group, which is, in my opinion, the best guy in the war band, which is the obelisk bearer uh, sitting at, he's only got that one inch range, but four attacks at strength four doing two, four damage for 110 points. Is, uh, is is a solid stat block. Now he's only moved three, like most of the war band, but he's T4, 20 wounds, again, for 110 points. Uh, the guy brings a decent amount of stats for his point cost. And again, uh, a lot of these abilities tie back to him. So he wants to be up, he wants to be doing things, and he's not a bad fighter by any means. Um, so they make they make a good pair together, right? Because he's, he's not easy to remove. He's going to make you pay for it. Um, but at the same time, you got that priestess there to bounce the abilities with, uh, you, you got anything on that Rob? 
No, nah, man, I, I agree 100%. It's just like the fact you're paying 110 for like a, an old school bespoke leader for like just like, you know, 20 wounds, four toughness, 4424. Like it's just so solid, dude. You just, you just, and he's like the broadcast. He's like the amp speaker of everything. So he's not only is he important and he plays with your leader, it's just a really cool, really unique excellent mid-range fighter just is just great stats for it and um honestly he could tank he could do damage he's he's just a good piece and he plays nicely go on to the uh do the the des- uh, desecrators or one like thing about favorite, the yeah. obelisk bearer is like it's out of those like animes you know where the guy drops like the super heavy cloak to the ground to show how powerful he is that's what he looks like when he's hauling a giant rock across the battlefield <laughs> like i'm gonna fight with a rock on my back <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's all good <laughs> yeah, you, absolutely a sweet model. Uh, but yeah, going into the desecrators, and then uh, you got the uh, the boys with the war picks and the uh, the the statue smashing hammers. Right now, uh, I think war pick comes out a little bit better. I mean, you can run the math. I, there's been plenty of other guys that have kind of talked about this, but uh, I personally prefer the war pick doing that four five two five damage profile, especially once you're kicking in. Uh, rock shattering blow into the mix um but th- they're solid three move four toughness 12 wounds i mean yeah you, you the 12 wounds you got to watch but you have heals right so get them in there the ability to move pop a double and hit like a truck um that's what these guys want to be doing right get them in action use them doubles these guys are very double hungry but set them up and they're they're going to do some damage I think it's a little strange because you look at their profiles, one's four, five, one's three, five, and then they just flip one is two and three damage. Right. And mathematically speaking, if you're hitting on three ups, you're actually better off having the damage. But if you're hitting on four ups or worse, you actually want the extra attack. So anyone who wants to play these, think if we are going up against, going up some Stormcast, you're going to want that extra attack. Going up against Skinks all day, you really might want to consider the uh, the Statue Smasher Hammer. Because it, it may actually end up giving you more damage because you're hitting on those three ups. Um, and that's true across almost every model out there. So just something yeah. to consider. Yeah, if you're ever like, like, oh, what do I build? One, rule of cool. Whatever you like, that's number one. That's most important. Whatever you think is cool. I think they both look sick, personally. It's, uh, but it's exactly what he said. You just flip-flop those profiles to whatever you need. If you want to magnetize them or you just want to say sub them out, whatever. It doesn't make a difference. Your call, guys. Uh, oh, with that being out. said... You have a war pick and a hammer. You make a hammer pick. Who knows? Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's it. You just clip off the one front of the pick, and then all of a sudden you have a hammer on one side, a pick on the other. You're exactly. you're absolutely sick. Glue pick on the other one. You're fine. Uh, it's it's good. Uh, Pete, you want me to take this one? I'll take yeah, the boring, I'll go take the boring it. ones. Uh, yeah. Idolark is a speed piece for them for eight flying beast. It's eight inches, three eight. It's really easy to kill. You want to steal objectives, but its ability is to come in into like a big scuffle and just snipe out something with gaze at the idol arc. That's really, it's a really good control debuffing tool, but for 105 to have eight wounds, it's kind of rough. So you have to be very, very careful. You're not just going to be like, I'm going to move the idol arc out. Yay, 16 inches dead. Uh, it does get the reaction, but like you don't have a lot to play with there. So you have to be very careful. My boy's never going to want to be fighting. He just wants to be a weird zinch stone bird and let him be. We have the defacers, which are like Fisher Price, my first other guys, <laughs> like desecrators, right? Like uh, hammering strikes is like a really cool version. Like it's a conditional version of tearing bite, right? Like you're four four two three, so like you're gonna land something. You have a pretty good damage profile, right? Four four ten, you land it, and then you use your double for that, and all of a sudden hammering strikes could be like, it could be like five eight yeah. on oh, the second okay. swing, and then you just explode something kind of wild it's the again it's get weird it's like how come they do get weird it's more for the the desecrator right like the desecrator is right mobile, more wounds. right it's um, tough it's it's really it's, tough it's to take tough. these guys over that but they are sweet models um and mm-hmm. then you have the defacer with the bow which is a archer uh you can make one if you're really into it i know kyle likes them like, like you can one. ship damage i'd rather let's, let's be rather, clear kyle likes one okay yes. okay so yeah. like nah, for those dude. listening right because we don't we don't hamper against so if you like the bows bring the bows and i actually <laughs> like the bows on this team because they're so slow right uh the the chaff here right they move four as compared to the defacers and the leaders which move three i mean they move at average pace rather than slow secondly 
if you're playing objective missions, someone's got to stand on the objective. If I have someone who could stand on the objective and still project range damage out there, why not bring it? Right. If I need to go and kill someone who's running away with a treasure and I can't reach them because I move three, at least I have a bow that I could start trying to fish for some crits. Right. There are uses for this model. Uh, it just seems off because two, three, one, three is significantly less damage than if you can get into engagement range of that four, four, two, three. Right. But I still think there's a use for this model out there um, because of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of the time I tried to stop this small boat that I was on by holding on to the docks as we were floating by. And then I realized you can't do that because it just rips your skin up. Now, did I stop it? Yeah, it was a small boat. I like held on for dear life. Did it rip my chest off? Yeah, you could bring the bow, but it might not be a great idea. But it is honestly the uh, the thought process that Kyle have is uh, is is really good. It's it's projection of damage. It keeps you safe. You have some way to tank on a a far point. It's not a bad call if you want to do it because the bow looks sweet. The stance looks sweet. The, the bow looks does sweet. Look sweet. It looks cool. Do it. Is it the best option? No, but it doesn't always have to be. So, next, the missions. Let's go through here. Pete, take us away on the general strategy. So, yeah, I mean, we keep talking about it, but these guys want to be in a fight, right? They want to engage. They want to brawl, right? You want to be going in there, popping those doubles and taking something out above your weight class, which you can if you position it right. Uh, to keep that in mind, you got to keep thinking about, okay, Bear and Priestess, where are they going to be? How's that going to feed off my other abilities, right? Um, and don't be afraid to use those doubles early on in the game to use rush to help get them into the position for late later in the game, right? It's all about setting up these pieces to get the most out of them. Um, Rob, you want to talk about objective missions? Yeah, I'll take, I'll, 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 I'll go, go Sonic on this one, right? Uh, I'm objective missions are neutral you have to really be careful where you're prioritizing your movement it takes time to get there uh you can't rotate easy so you're not going to be playing hop skip and jump with them uh but when you're there and they don't clap you you can just clap right back so you're happy to brawl you have stone warp to increase heal for staying power you have your curse of the jade to sit there and reduce damage and take it and then you have your doubles to just sit there and swing back uh it can be depending on the team like if if like you're going against another three team like you're probably going to start swinging and hitting, uh, hitting things hard. But if it's like you're going against KO on an objective mission, it might be very tough for you because they have a lot more projection and you're very slow. And speaking of that, that's where it bleeds naturally into the treasure missions, right? We're naturally disadvantaged because we don't have a natural hunter. The uh, Eidolark cannot pick up things, but he can certainly slow people to try and pick stuff up. Uh, and then you have to, uh, once you do get it, it's using your reaction to, to reduce it, Stone Warp to heal it, and then trying to get things like Might of the Speaker for extra cheeky moves, trying to do things like that. Uh, it's it's really just, it's a tougher one for us. We are disadvantaged on it. Um, but doesn't mean you're out of the count. Get creative. Doubles could be rushed for the beginning. Move things eight. Make sure you're set up position correctly. Uh, kill missions, any way you want to take it, or do we just bleed right I'll into do it? it? I mean, honestly, uh, aside from ranged profiles, right, if you're facing another band with similar strength, uh, most teams in the game are melee. Honestly, you're pretty favored, right? Uh, your chaff don't die as easy as most chaff do. Uh, your abilities, let your chaff and smaller models really just hit above their weight class. Uh, you know, those shatter, uh, desecrators, S5, with their ability to go to S6. Uh, that's, I mean, they're they're hitting Stormcast on fours at 100 points. Absolutely wild, right? Um, you got your gaze of the idol arc to either slow down what you're trying to hunt, or uh, once again, if they're really tough, you just reduce their uh, toughness down so you can kind of make sniping those uh, those kills a lot easier. And then, of course, any kill mission, they're trying to kill you. So Stone Warp to heal, don't die. Use your reaction curse of Jade. Guess what? You don't die, right? So um, it kind of ties in with that treasure mission of once you get the treasure, hold on to it. Use Stone Warp and don't die. That's what these guys are good at. Even with the lack of toughness, that reaction uh, plus their heal ability just makes up for it in both of these formats. Uh, but it does affect your deployments quite a bit, quite, quite a bit. Uh, you got to be aggressive, right? That move three um, means you have to maximize your movement, which is always not the best thing to do, especially if they have like a mage attack that can hit you at seven inches, right? But remember, you can heal, right? They're going to shoot you. You move up twice, heal for six. So what if they got two mage attacks on you? You're going to heal right back up and nothing they can do about it, right? 
But the biggest things you need to do is stick within that nice bubble of your obelisk bearer and your priestess to maximize where your healing is. Because if you remember, you can only heal within nine inches of the bearer and you can only heal for the full value of the dice if you're within six inches of the priestess. Uh, so those two traveling together, creating that bubble of I'm going to heal in this area and heal as many people as possible is really critical for the strength of this team uh, in terms of just positioning, right? Um, and model roles matter in this team, right? Uh, your leader is going to be just kind of that support piece and heal. Uh, your uh, person, your uh, desecrators are going to be the ones that are going to be killing stuff. Your archer is going to hold position, right? So unfortunately, they don't do so well in terms of being, a, you know, everyone can do everything kind of team. They kind of have their designated roles and you have to play into those things. So be aggressive. You can take more than you expect with that reaction. Uh, don't be hesitant to use your reaction because you are going to have 10 models straight out the box and just bully your opponent and trade up. So just. And yeah, something to go off of that too, uh, talking about utilizing rush, something to think about too, is like your defacers, right? They're move four, right? They're not like the desk carrier with the move three. So rushing that gives you 10 inches, right? Say you saved your wild die that first round, right? Thinking about seizing initiative, right? If you're able to rush him right up into the action and in round two seize initiative and go for that double to start hitting way above his weight class, suddenly that 95 point model is pulling a lot more than 95 points. So again, it's this whole idea of setting yourself up for the next rounds and think about what you're doing with your wild eye because oftentimes early game doubles is what you're feeding, right? You don't need to go for those big giant moves early on set yourself up to be able to carry into the later game i don't know pete it's quad six or bust of my first turn yeah, that's right, uh, that's the only option i go for we so, can't all I mean, roll like rob <laughs> right but uh, i mean talking about your wild dice like let's go through some examples uh rob how are we gonna idolize this damage <laughs> this is pretty sick dude like cool. these are quick too i i like the simplicity of this war band uh with the effectiveness of it and i think that's what makes it we did kmk last time right and there's just like big brain gamble calculations that you're taking or this one is just i got a triple and a double i'm going to reduce this dude's toughness and then i'm going to reduce the movement so he can't really get away if he wants to disengage and run he's not getting far um and then i have um i have the double over there and guess what the uh the double uh i'm just gonna sit there and clap it right after so it reduces i use the uh the 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 lrl to be four like we're on five strength but like anything else it would just reduce it enough to where we have to get to uh but, uh, but that's pretty much the combo earlier, is just right? gaze like right. you sling the chaff in turn one uh, it's a four four two three this is a four four uh, four uh, toughness profile you get your idol arc to follow right behind them idol arc goes mm -hmm. first reduces that toughness down to three Cool. That first attack now is most likely going to hit because it's on a three up, right? Right. Meaning that, uh, you know, threes are going to add three to your damage going into the next attack. And all of a sudden you're hitting on what? Five, six damage on the second attack on three ups. <laughs> like that thing is gone. Absolutely gone if you set this up right. And that's on your, your cheapest chaff model, which is actually kind of wild uh, that that could hit up that hard if you could set up the three plus to hit. Yeah, exactly. And it's a really cool thing just to know with the double and triple, you can debuff something and then smack it down. Real simple play. Uh, but there's also my favorite, right? Utilizing the weight action. <laughs> Do you want me to go through this one? Yeah, take it. Well, I'll take this away. If so, it's longer than 30 seconds, I'm going to get it. would mad. not be longer than 30 seconds because we're going to go warp speed heal. Uh, two doubles. We'll say we got a double five, double six. Uh, we're the nine inches of the opposite spare, six with inch of the priest. Uh, we're going to stone warp, heal for five, wait. Next yep. turn, stone warp, heal for six, total heal for 11 on two dice. Absolutely crazy amount of healing. I'm done. Yeah, that's it. It's just, <laughs> it's ability, weight, ability, right? And like a lot of people coming in think they're like, you know, oh, I'm going to activate, use an ability, move, attack, whatever it might be. Sometimes your best bet's just to sit there and use an ability, weight, use the ability again. Uh, it's really effective on certain things. Yeah, it's more of a niche advanced technical flex, but it's uh, really cool if like you, you know, you fight, they counter you, heal them up, somebody else comes in, touches you, heal them up again. It's pretty cool. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's cute, but it's cool. Well, here's the thing, right? Chip damage matters in games, yep. right? So being 100%. able to negate that chip damage matters, right? Right. 
But uh, we'll finish it out here, right? Like we have a we have a full scenario here. Turn four, uh, set of objectives. So we're gonna talk about the worst mission, treasure, right? But let's imagine you hold one, your opponent holds one. One's just sitting there on the board, right? You got a triple, double, two wild dice. Uh, we got a lot of options here, right, Rob? Like, what would you do in this case? So it's cool, man. I mean, like one of them is just to to flat out use the uh, to use the the quad, make a quad, right? And we just quad move get something to pick up move somebody else in to attack uh we have a couple different options there move the um desecrator at the pick away so we can get that move the obelisk bear in onto the treasure pick up the treasure and then hold that or we can have the other guy with their treasures so far back there so we can like move try to like cut that down and then move again and try to get a swing with the double off on the pick to have them drop the treasure there's a couple different things here uh and it's pretty interesting on that uh, i'm interested to hear what people would want to do because their quad is so potent and gives like a lot of flexibility to it uh, I would like to see what people do with it in optimized state for that. Like if it's a quad six or whatever, whatever it might be. Uh, same thing with the facer, like swinging in. I don't have any HP variable set here. So I just want to see and hear what people have to do. But I think that's what I would do. Move the pick away, pick up the other treasure, maybe swing somebody down there to jump down and grab it or swing and engage the spear up top with the idol arc just to tie him up so he can't get down anymore. Like it's a, uh, it's it's pretty interesting. There's a couple different plays. Jump the priestess down. Uh, yeah. I mean, hey, I'm going into it right now. So the, I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments, what you would do. I'm really interested in hearing what people's different perspectives are for different situations. I mean, the only thing I want to bring up, too, is anytime we have an ability that has a free move action, remember, Dude, you can so use good. that free move action to pick up a treasure in most missions. Some missions say like you have to use an action to pick it up, but in a lot of missions, you don't. And the treasure rule state, as long as you end your move within one inch, of that treasure or pass through it you could pick up that treasure so using that quad and when you want to activate maybe a different model a different time right remember that quad i can get a disengage and a move off of that right. quad right so i could disengage move grab the treasure with a unit that maybe couldn't have done that before for whatever mm -hmm. the reason was right or um even just trying to set up a move 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 because you double move them to pick up the treasure they still haven't gone yet move them two more times, right? Because it's the obelisk bear commanding them to move. So uh, mm -hmm. just a lot of really, really cool tech plays, or um, you can always do my favorite and just try to smash face with a, a whole bunch of doubles and those desecrators and just say, hey, I'll win treasure if you have no one left to hold it. So let's go. <laughs> right, for sure. Anything you want to add, Pete, before we move on? Yeah, because I don't know. For, like for me in this situation, I'd be thinking of I'd be jumping that priestess down that treasure and be like, no, come to the priestess. Right. So that suddenly my move three doesn't matter as much in this situation. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. You can come to me because all my guys are going to hit you way above the weight class. Right. What's the beam? dictate What's the, beam? the play? It's uh, bait. This is bait. <laughs> this is bait. This is bait. Mm -hmm. Be the bait. It's okay. Be the big. They're gonna let that D three and be like, "Yeah, I, I, I think I can remove that." Yeah, right. absolutely. Beat you use Another your connection. movement to the best of your ability. But yeah, uh, absolutely, let's, let's close it out then. So, going through it, the box, uh, one thousand points here comes with a priestess, a bearer, uh, an idol arc, three desecrators. Build them however you want. Defacers, obviously, you build four bows, and everyone else will start laughing at me. Uh, no. Build them how you want to build them, right? Uh, I don't think there's necessarily a wrong way to build the box, but we would strongly encourage you to probably limit the number of bows that you do bring uh, to one absolute max two. Otherwise, you may feel the power of this team probably decreases a little bit versus another casual list. Um, uh, desecrators, you can mix and match as right. you wish, but uh, normally we don't give comments too much on how to build these boxes. We want to talk about one box team, how they feel, how they play, uh, but we also want you to have a good time. So that being said, try not to build more than one or two bows, please. <laughs> but some allies. Uh, I know Rob's excited to talk about allies. Dude, I'm I'm the uh, Underworld's uh, prince over here. I love being able to buy a cheap box and just insert it into anything and bring extra options in. I admittedly am not the biggest chaos player, but lately I've been in love with the thrice fold. 
they just fit perfectly in here. Vashtis and, and Lassevere. You can see other people. Spike Claw Swarm adds cheap, fast bodies to maybe help assist with treasure missions. Also a res on those cheap bodies. Uh, Scavix has ability to control points a little bit better. So when you're on points, you can be Befoul Land or Manifestation of Great Plague. You have Ephilim, which you could do, uh, yet again, more speed slash swapping abilities and abilities to use a pull to have somebody come into you. Anything that will speed you up or force engagement is something that's always great. It acts like a force multiplier with this warband. Or you just want to have a big smashing time and paint up some cool thematic Myrmidons, former Red Crushers. Uh, and the Spherinx is definitely a really cool ally for them because it gives speed and control mm -hmm. tools with a net and that quad. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things and plays you can do to expand on this comfortably. Have fun, experiment, do what you like, paint what you like. And uh, let me know what you guys decide on. I'm a big Thricefold fan because I'm a sweaty neckbeard. So, I mean, what do I know? The Tell me what you guys keep like. In mind is uh, think of how your warband plays. Think what you're missing and what's weak. And then add allies that Ooh. fixes that. If you have a slow warband like this, bring in that speed. Bring it in. All yeah. right. Absolutely. And what's amazing about this warband, too, is like we, we talked about a little bit, but just how good this warband looks. I mean, yeah, that, they're so cool, uh, dude. They're super oh, cool. They make me uh, happy. The, it's such a great look. I love the look. I can't stop talking about how great these models look. They are fun. They are so fun. Yeah. You, there's so many different paint schemes you can take that. So even if you're not a big painter, like they just they take a brush well, you will have fun with this warband. I mean, yeah, you got for Amethyst, sure. you got Jade. Think of any gemstone, and you can paint your warband like that gemstone. Like, it, that's, to me, what takes us to the next level. Like, I want to be Amethyst. I want to be, uh, I don't know, Obsidian. And then you paint them completely black and emo-looking. It'd be awesome. Uh, you could be but, Sapphire. You could be Ruby. You could be you want, Pearl. Real spice of this team. Uh, try running just all obelisk bearers. <laughs> so mm. you could take the leader and uh, I believe eight obelisk bearers for just under a thousand. Um, right. So it's nine that's models. So many wounds. That's it's a so hundred and eighty wounds. wounds on a that team is. that's reaction is to take one less damage, one less crit. So good luck trying to remove that from the battlefield. <laughs> once once they're there, they're there. Uh, so yeah, if you ever want to just uh, run up and just be a gigantic wall your opponent can't remove, uh, it probably would take some kit bashing considering you only get one yeah. giant rock per box, but I yeah. mean, come on, it's a giant rock. You can make one of those by hand. It's a right? good conversion project for sure. You can even cut up the, the obelisk bearers, like goddamn beacon, right? Cut it up and give them different parts of the beacon and they're all obelisk bearers. They have to assemble it together. Look at that. Systematic. Look at Big you. Big brain Rob. plays. Look at him trying, guys. I'm trying. Uh, but uh, really, uh, I don't. I think that encompasses kind of all of our last thoughts here. Like, sure, we wish they could be a little bit faster, but considering their insane damage, it's tough to argue that too much, right? They just have 10 models, which is a good model count. Overall, just... Like, it's one of the best sport war bands I like to bring for, hey, want a fair, balanced game, box versus box? Jade Obelisk always fits the, the bill right on the money. So. Yeah, they feel they feel really good where it should be. Um, I, I know they have, like, a, a very fixed ceiling if we're talking about competitive, but I don't think that really matters, especially when you're getting more new allies in and you really love painting them and you love exploring them. They're awesome. They could trade up and swing with bigger dudes. Like, it's a good time. Just have fun with it. You're going to have good games with this warband. Yeah, Absolutely. you really are. I, I really, I really, it's a really chill warband, too. You're not putting big, you have the option to put big brain, like, uh, vector, where's my Venn diagram, six inch, nine inch off the obelisk bear, heart eater. Uh, but honestly, like they're pretty straightforward tank when I get hit and then turn back and put it on offense, defense, offense, defense, offense, and that's it. And it's really just an enjoyable sit back with your friends and have a good time playing work, right? War band. I'm a big fan of it. Me too. Uh, any last thoughts, anybody Are we uh, ready to I'll, wrap this up? I'll end it with this is just con uh, I know we talk about it all the time, but positioning, 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 positioning with this war band will make a break it in a lot of games is get yourself set up to be optimal with the damage i agree if you position right then you could jo well this is going to be a good time <laughs> and with that we're done okay what so, a, what anyway a, what a layup peter <laughs> he gave me the alley <laughs> so this is kyle great way you know this is peter at the saint 16
Oh, this is Rob Girth Demon. Thanks for joining that, us. Uh, thanks for joining us. Please, because I forgot. Be a hero. Don't Ooh, be a chaff. God, like and so subscribe. Press that up button. Leave those comments because that's what keeps us doing this, that we know people are watching this and they're enjoying yeah. it. If there's anything you want to see, anything you want to chat to us about, you can hit us up on the Discord. We host TTS tournaments with Casual Competitive every single month. So hit us up on there or just down below and have a great night or day, whatever it is. Something like that.